Hello everyone and welcome to Roberts and Wesley Scripture Reflection Hour. I, my name is Reverend Karen and I'm here at Roberts and Wesley United Church in Edmonton, Alberta and I have several friends and, and parishioners here with me who you will hear the voices of on Zoom, but you will not see them. We hope that if you're joining us on Facebook that you will add your um, add your comments in the comment box and then I can share it with the group as well. I know some of you are at work and so it's easier to watch online. The one update I wanted to give those of you who are online is that starting next week, we are gonna shift from using Facebook and we're gonna move to YouTube there will be a message on Facebook that can direct you to the link where you will find us. But moving forward, it has better quality and you can still chat and different things on YouTube as well, but it'll just be better overall for those of you watching live streamed. So with that, like I said, we use a technique called Lexio Divina where we read through the scripture that's coming for this next Sunday three times and focusing our attention and our thoughts and reflections in different ways each round. After we've read through it, we spend some time in silent reflection and feel free to doodle, knit, or simply sit in silence or journal, whatever it is you need to do um, to help you engage in the, in the reflection time, whatever works best for you. We're gonna begin by lighting a candle and remembering and inviting God's presence into our space here with us today um, as we will be looking and reflecting on what wisdom we are receiving this day from our scripture. We are going to begin by reading our Sabbath prayer together, um, praying together. So I invite you to join me in that as you are able or simply listen and reflect on the word. So let us pray. God of all creation, we offer you our thanksgiving for a time rich with connections among each other and with you. We thank you for moments when we have experienced what it is to be united even in our differences. Help us to grow as a listening, discerning, learning people. Help us to give up patterns and structures that enslave us and others. Help us to acknowledge our fear and lean into your hope and your courage. Help us to grow in our trust in each other and in your spirit. Fill us with your grace and with your wisdom, with your patience and with your love. Propel us into your future, rooted in the richness of our past. In Christ we pray. Amen. We are going to read from the Gospel lesson this week. Um, so we're looking at the Gospel of Mark, chapter 10, starting at verse 46. If you have a Bible and want to read along, feel free to do so, um, but you can also just listen. I'm going to be reading from the New Revised Standard Version, and I will use inclusive language, as that is important to us here at Robertson Wesley. Um, but it is nice. Whatever translation you have, it can often give us insights into things. So feel free to, like I said, follow along in the Bible you have at home. There are Bibles online as well if you go to BibleGateway.com. So, the passage from the Gospel of Mark. As I read through this the first time, I would like you to focus on your feelings. What feelings arise for you as you hear this story or these words from Scripture? And like I said, after we read through it, we'll spend some time in silent reflection and then we will share with each other. So, here we go. Mark chapter 10, starting at verse 46. They came to Jericho, and as Jesus and his disciples and a large crowd were leaving Jericho, Bartimaeus, son of Timaeus, a blind beggar, was sitting by the roadside. 
When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many sternly ordered him to be quiet, but he cried out even more loudly, Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stood still and said, Call him here. And they called the blind man, saying to him, Take heart, get up, he is calling you. So throwing off his cloak, he sprang up and came to Jesus. Then Jesus said to him, What do you want me to do for you? The blind man said to Jesus, My teacher, let me see again. Jesus said to him, Go, your faith has made you well. Immediately he, re he regained his sight and followed Jesus on the way. So what feelings were evoked for you as you listen to this story? Spend some time in silent reflection and then we will share with one another those feelings.
We've just read through the Gospel of Mark, chapter 10, verse 46 to 52 once. And the first time through, we were focusing on how it makes us feel. So I'm going to invite those of you on Facebook to add your feelings into the comment boxes. If you feel comfortable doing that, I will share it with the group that are on Zoom. And if you ever want to join Zoom, please just contact the church office and we'll get you on there. For those of you who are on Zoom, you were muted. So what feelings were evoked for you? Remembering that we're trying to listen deeply to one another. So let's Let's focus just on sharing those feelings for now and holding our own comments back and we'll, we'll leave our comments for the last round. What are the feelings? I felt excited and pleased. Can I add one more little phrase? Mm -hmm. Such faith. Mm. Hopeful. Mm -hmm. I felt compassion for Timaeus. It must be terrible to not be able to see and um, Anyway, I was rooting for him. Yeah. Um, I felt uh, gratitude because I've lost my sight because of cataracts and regained my sight. Um, and I also felt appreciation for Bartimaeus because he had faith. He was assertive and asked for what he wanted. Uh, the, the thought that came to my mind was courageous. The fact that in spite of people telling him to not come forward, he continued to plead his case. Hmm. Holding all of those feelings in our hearts and in our minds and our spirits. We're gonna read through this a second time. This is the round where I want you to let the words and the story flow through your head and see which word or phrase is sticking with you, which one just won't leave your mind. Again, try not to overthink it. Um, and then in our time of reflection, we can consider why that might be. Why might this word or phrase be catching our attention. What purpose might it serve? So I will read through it a second time. So from Mark chapter 10, verse 46 to 52, and it says, they came to Jericho as Jesus and his disciples and a large crowd were leaving Jericho. Bartimaeus, son of Timaeus, a blind beggar, was sitting by the roadside when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many sternly ordered him to be quiet, but he cried out even more loudly, son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stood still and said, call him over. And they called the blind man and saying to him, take heart, get up, Jesus is calling you. So throwing off his cloak, he sprang up and came to Jesus. Then Jesus said to him, what do you want me to do for you? The blind man said to Jesus, my teacher, let me see again. And Jesus said to him, go, your faith has made you well. Immediately he regained his sight and followed him on the way. So what word or phrase is catching your attention and why? We'll spend some time in silent reflection and then we will share with one another those phrases.
just read through the Gospel of Mark chapter 10 a second time and this time I invited you to focus on what word or phrase was catching your attention and why that might be. So I open it up to the group both online and on Zoom. Janet, you're muted. Great, thank you. I have two actually. The one is mercy and take heart. And I think they're meaningful. They stuck, you know, they really struck me there. Uh, is that they are aligned with hope, hmm. which is the first first idea I had. Well, the phrase that jumped out at me was near the end, uh, see your faith has healed you. And we have heard that so often from Jesus. And it occurred to me that Jesus never stops and asks these people about their faith. He just accepts that they have faith and is willing to do what he can to heal them. And I came up with uh, that same phrase, uh, Karen. Um, uh, and, and I looked at some other uh, little happenings in the scriptures that, that connect with this. And, and what's so impressive is that it's go with your faith that uh, has made you whole. Uh, great need, uh, great faith, great healer. Thanks, Steve. Um, the one that, the phrase that really caught my attention was have mercy. It's not a term I use personally, but there's a humility to this phrase. And it made me pause and think about it. It also reminded me of how empowering it is to ask for help. For me, it was uh, the verse, let me see again. And that to me was um, a real the show of faith. Uh, um, he had complete faith that if he asked that um, Jesus, and so it seemed like Jesus was saying, your faith has made you well. You, you reached out in faith. Then your faith has made you well. And it's just making him about that and just kind of thinking how uh, uh, and sort of along the, um, the lines of all of you about just um, it is courageous to take a step of faith and how often do we, we really do that step on face and ask for, for what you really need and want sight in this case. With that kind of faith. And the one that caught my attention was Jesus stood still and, and maybe it's because I am in leadership that I would think about that particular phrase and the importance of, of stopping and pausing to really hear the concerns of the people, hear the faith of the people. 
and sometimes it's not until we stop doing what we're doing that we we can really be present to those moments Sorry that you should say that, I think, Karen, because um, what we're doing here, what you're having us do here, is stop. <laughs> it's a good <laughs> discipline for me, absolutely. <laughs> no, it's for us, too. Yeah. I mean, reading through this the first time, uh, compared to what I felt the first time and feel now, or think now, my first response was, was uh, the first reading not that my response so much, but the first reading was, was a bit superficial. Mm -hmm. And now we're getting deeper into the complexity of it. That's what stopping does, I guess. Looking around and seeing and thinking. For sure. And watching. So let's take all of this and do it one more time and see how much further we can go. Um, as I read through it this third time, what I'm going to invite you to think about is, is what, what is the message that we're hearing for our time here and now? What does this particular scripture and the actions of Jesus teach us, inspire us with? Um, yeah, what message does the Spirit have for us this day? I'm going to read through it a third time and then we will open it up to more discussion after some time of silent reflection. So it says, they came to Jericho. As Jesus and his disciples and a large crowd were leaving Jericho, Bartimaeus, son of Timaeus, a blind beggar, was sitting by the roadside. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many sternly ordered him to be quiet, but he cried out even more loudly, Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stood still and said, Call him here. And they called the blind man, saying to him, Take heart, get up, he is calling you. So throwing off his cloak, he sprang up and came to Jesus. Then Jesus said to him, What do you want me to do for you? The blind man said to him, My teacher, let me see again. And Jesus responded to him, Go, your faith has made you well. Immediately he regained his sight and followed him on the way. What message does this passage have for us this day? We'll spend some time in silent reflection and then we'll share with one another.
So I've just finished reading through the Gospel of Mark, chapter 10, verse 46 to 52, a third time. And this third time we were discerning after listening to everything people have had to say so far, what message God might have for us this day. What, what is this scripture saying to us for our time and place right now? So I open it up to the group, reminding you that you've been muted. Well, I think that um, the idea of hope is definitely there. <laughs> um, this applies to both Timaeus and Jesus, uh, or the behaviors of, of them are evident today. There are people needing so much, and there are people giving so much too. I asked for mercy for my pain, my physical pain, um, as do many people that ask for mercy for their, their physical pain or their impoverishment or their blindness in all sorts of ways. I mean, this to me, this passage is very, is very much a metaphor for, uh, or an analogy for today. Uh, as far as Jesus' part goes, he, you know, he gives, and individuals give, and uh, organizations give. Uh, I mean, there isn't a day that goes by in the mail when I don't get a letter requesting something. My time, my uh, money, and often I, I give that. I turn around and respond to that. So the, when I go back to the original questions of, of how does it make me feel hopeful, uh, what words stand out, uh, take heart, uh, and so on, <laughs> it, it, seems, it seems like it's, this is today. It could be today, metaphorically speaking. And literally, it is today, too. It's, it's very interesting. So I'll probably get, uh, oh, today I got uh, something from, uh, oh, parents, Canada, Canada plan, you know, parents of Canada, it used to be foster parents plan. I got four, four of those children across the world. I started over 50 years ago. I have a certificate that says so. Uh, if it, when I was in were early years of teaching, yes, dear. Sorry, this is Bela. I found her. Pardon? I found her. You found her. She found our hope, our cat. <laughs> she granny. She's in. She's inside. Yeah. She yeah. Granny. Was was it the hope mission that was that burned down? What was the mission that burned down? Was asking last week. Well, oh, they lost their food truck. <clears throat> well, they're, they're, their food they're, truck was stored in, in, and they had clothing stored in a different place yeah. on Argyle Road, and that's what burned. <clears throat> so that was the Hope Mission, was it? Yes. Okay. Well, so it was an African mission, and Hope Mission was using part of their facility. Okay, well, whatever. They, they lost stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Because I've got a pile of warm winter clothes. <laughs> Well, you can bring them to the church, Janet. This will oh, send I, I, Karen, I know that. I know that. It's not an issue. I know I could do that, too. Yeah. I, everything gets used, and they, the missions are, or the charitable organizations are very good at um, sharing what they don't need, too. Yeah. Sorry, I'm going on. Too long. Well, for me, the... the uh, lesson that I can take from this is the value of perseverance um, that Bartimaeus uh, did not give up and he was obviously desperate and uh, but he gained Jesus attention
and I follow. I wrote down persistence. Mm-hmm. The little story there, there's a little pull here, a little pull there. And what I liked too was how um, at first the crowd said, shush, be quiet. But he kept on, and then Jesus called, and then the crowd said, sort of like, yay, 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 go, go, go and see him. And, and I really like that. Um, so there's um, the individual need and persistence and, and carrying on to find good things. And, and I really applaud the, the good crowd or those in the crowd that said, yes, go for it. Oh, that's all I can think of right now. Thanks. Uh, Charlene on, on Facebook said, um, it's hard for me to believe it's okay or safe to ask for help in our world, but the message that she is receiving is this. It is okay to ask God for help. Jesus will not judge as the world has or me. So having that faith and that trust. Well, Karen, I want to thank you for saying that Jesus, you know, saying Jesus stopped because I couldn't, I just like, boom, it hit me. And um, I thought, you know, and then I looked at the words or the, the, mm, the verbs, the action. He stopped, he asked, he responded. And um, I was thinking how he stopped to listen and he was paying it so he was paying attention and then he asked and that was he might have known but he still asked and and it clarified what what the man needed and it gave bartimaeus um well first of all it empowered bartimaeus to ask and um and that also helps clarify for him what he wants and i thought what a role model that is for us if i stop to listen and ask what somebody needs like what do you want and 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 i know when other people have asked me what do you want it's helped me to focus what's the issue here what is it that i want here and uh, i just thought wow what a great role model for um dealing with other people in the sense and responding. So yeah, thanks for that. Cause I would have missed that if he hadn't said that. So yeah, appreciate it. What I started thinking about was the, the fact that Manny said, be quiet. And then who was it that said, take heart, get up, he's calling. Um, sort of wondering, did some folks change their minds or did just some folks uh, take a different position? And uh, there's, it, it's like, well, just going through the whole uh, civic election process, there have been some fine voices, people that were not elected, but spoke so well and and then there were some voices that were more like the be quiet and not quite so uh, kind to the world. I've appreciated what everyone has shared. Does anybody have a last comment before we close our time together? So as I said before, we will be exploring the scripture on Sunday in more detail. So I encourage you to keep reflecting on it. Um, Every day things can pop up and catch our attention that will take us deeper in our understanding of of what God is calling us to do and be about. So as a way of closing our time together, I invite you to say the Lord's Prayer um, using whatever version speaks 
most to your heart. So let us unite our hearts in prayer. Let us pray. Our creator who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Thank you for joining us on Facebook. As I said, next week we will start live streaming from YouTube directly. So it would be the RWUC YouTube channel, and hopefully we'll see you then at noon. Okay, thanks.